what is ITIM Tivoli Identity Manager? Well, it's a Java app that runs on its uh, on an app server. Actually, the installer uh, install all the app server middleware as well as the LDAP and the database I use for logging that I'll come and talk a little bit more in a minute. Uh, they, it can run on a single or a multiple server and from the app server it, it, it has all the high availability. It runs on uh, Windows. It runs on uh, Linux. It runs on all sort of uh, Unix. So it really is a truly multi-platform application. And what are the main components that ITIM are? One is the workflow. And the really, more than a component itself, you can think of uh, ITIM built around a very powerful workflow. That uh, That's what it gets the performance and the scalability of all the things that are related to uh, workflow activities done within ITIM. And even though it has its own workflow, it can easily integrate with other workflows for higher level actions. Uh, if you have uh, Maximo, Remedy, any any kind of workflow, you, you can actually have that initiate an action on ITIM. ITIM can do all the provisioning actions and then reply back to that uh, external workflow. Extremely powerful, and we will see that uh, in action through all the presentation. It has a post office interface, very smart, that can queue up all the all the emails regarding to some operations. Uh, instead of sending spam mail for everything that it does, it can actually queue those up and has all many other features. It supports uh, Lotus Notes, uh, Exchange, and many other group-wise, many other uh, email uh, systems. He has an LDAP for keeping an identity of all the, uh, keeping a representation of all the identities that are out there. And that uh, in, uh, has uh, also a lot to do with the high performance that ITIM has. It has, has a database for uh, keeping all the events that have happened uh, as part of the action that ITIM has done. Uh, so if you are running reports, you're not actually affecting the normal operations of the, uh, of the LDAP. He has uh, adapters, and here's a list of some of the adapters that we have out of the box. And uh, the adapter is, uh, we will go f and talk some more further, is just a representation of all the systems that ITIM has the capability of, uh, you know, doing uh, operations of provisioning, deprovisioning, recertification, and many others that we will go about. Really, within ITIM, there are three concepts that uh, we're going to be uh, showing. The first one is the role, and uh, we're going to be creating roles, and ITIM is a, is a, is a, is a role-centric uh, tool, extremely capable uh, to do that. Then we're going to be uh, creating provisioning policies that will tie up the role with the service. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be hammering on, on those three things. We're going to be building roles, provisioning policies, uh, and that will be tied up to services and the specific workflows. And that sim simple concept that is actually borrows from objective-oriented, uh, 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 separates. I mean, you don't put everything on a role, but you have these three entities. And you'll see through all these demonstrations that we will be doing here the enormous flexibility you get for that. But what set teams apart from, from many of the system is that is ta is it that I team like many other tools that yeah you have to do a little bit of coding well there's not such a thing as a little bit of coding you either code or you don't code and I team's mentality is really no coding really our motto is zero coding and we are going to be demonstrating that through all the, the use cases that we are going to be uh, building across uh, this uh, this demonstration today nor there's uh, coding, nor there's uh, any kind of uh, the classical world that you hear around that is customize. Meaning, I'm going to go into this property table and I'm going to change this parameter. And then, when you migrate that stuff, you need to remember all that. That complicates the matter. That's, to me, that's kind of a bastardize a product. I mean, you really make it harder to to maintain, harder to support. Uh, we we believe that what you should do is simply configure 
a product. And that's what we're going to be doing through all these demos. No coding. All you're going to be doing is clicking here, clicking there. And if the tool is mature, the tool should be able to do all those things uh, by just uh, clicking and drop down menus and simple uh, activities like that. And that's what we're going to be uh, demonstrating all throughout uh, this uh, this uh, session. The first thing that we are going to actually be doing is actually we are going to be starting with the with the roles, and we'll see that a role is nothing more than an abstraction that really should have meaningful name for the things that it uh, uh, that, that it encompasses. So if I see a role, the role should have picked up a, a, a name that represents the type of actions that I'm going to be actually having. It should aggregate many entitlements. It should not be, you know, having a role for a single entitlement is kind of a, you know, uh, an over overusing uh, and abusing a little bit of the concept of the role. You can certainly do that, but we'll see that there is a better approach uh, to do that. So a role should aggregate very many things, and typically a role should be something that is automatic. It is something that your manager or somebody else uh, assigns you, uh, but it's not typically something you request. It's something that you know you get promoted there, so you get another role that brings some entitlements. Uh, uh, to you. Contrary to that, and, and also, of course, is hierarchical in nature. You know, it, it, you, you inherit from your parents the access rights, and uh, you, you have the capability of actually having a role be the owner of another role, so you can really do sophisticated actions. There are other actions that are far more simple, that are typically discretionary. The, uh, that's things that people request. And those are simple access, uh, and we will show uh, in, the, in the use cases that we will go along that when you want like uh, things that you want people to select from a list, well, there's no need to really create a role for every individual selection they will make, that they can get those to the access. And the two things are going to be actually playing along, alongside extremely, extremely well and reducing the number of roles and helping with the uh, manageability of, uh, of your solution. And you'll see that through the user interface where the user cares is really about an access. It doesn't necessarily care that much about what roles do I have, but really what accesses does that role entitles me to have. The next concept we are actually going to be talking about is the concept of a service and a service is the abstraction that really tells us about the endpoints that we are dealing with. The, it has the capability of really going deeply into the application group details and aspects of the application that, you know, that uh, when somebody, if somebody will be actually doing the manual provisioning of the operation, that's, those are the things that they are doing. But the adapter cannot be something that you just send stuff to and just hope that things really happen in there. If you send some actions to an adapter, you need to actually go out there to the endpoint and have the capability of notice what things change either by, 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 by the effect of your action or by something else or somebody bypassing the tool that goes out and do things. You know, you need to be able to bring that into the uh, the item tool and figure it out, well, somebody is doing things that they're not supposed to. I'm going to alert, I'm going to correct them, I'm going to warn people about it. And this is what is called a closed loop system. And that capability of recon or reconciliation is really essential. And, and the, in, the important thing is, again, as anything that we will, everything that we will be showing here, item does that without a single line of code to be actually uh, needed. 
The last component that we are going to be uh, talking about is really the the policy. And there are several policies. One, and the one that we're going to be using the most, is are actually provisioning policies that are going to define, that, uh, that are going to actually do make the tie between the service, which is a representation of the endpoint, the role that is involved into that provisioning policy, and the workflow that is associated with it. And that's how you tie, that's the place where you tie up those things. And we're going to be creating uh, several provisioning policies throughout the demonstration. But there are other uh, provisioning or other policies like password policies that define, you know, how, how what's the discipline that we're going to be enforcing here for um, for passwords, there is uh, there is recertification or attestation policies that that, that the tool does. There is uh, separation of duty. Uh, there is uh, there are adoption policies. There are several policies in the in the in the system. But you are going to be able to do all these things again with zero coding, and that's what we're going to be demonstrating uh, through all these uh, these sessions. The environment that we have set up here to demonstrate all these is a demo scenario that I'm going to be describing here. Well, of course, we have iTeam with, with all these components that we mentioned before, and we are going to be uh, provisioning to mainly uh, endpoints are going to be an LDAP, and it's going to be Active Directory. Those are the, the ones that we're going to be using the most. Uh, one, you know, agent-based, another one agent-less. And we're going to be sending email notifications out of the uh, as a consequence of uh, doing the workflow uh, through an, an email system. And we selected uh, Thunderbird. It's an open source, uh, just to make sure that people don't think that we only work with Lotus Notes or Exchange or Groupwise or whatever. We're going to be taking in this demonstration the initial feed of the users from an HR application. And this is just a simulated application that's just, uh, just a front end to a database where we add people. And our team is set up with a feed that, you know, when anything changes on that database, our team gets the delta and that is fed into our team for, for, for the workflow to kick in and start processing that information. In your system, you may have uh, an SAP HR, you can have PeopleSoft, and we, of course, have an out-of-the-box adapter for those as well uh, to accommodate for that. We're going to be showing iTeam through two perspectives. One is the self-help perspective, which is how a user, any user, manager, employee, whatever, uses the system to request things or to see what they have or, or you know, all, everything that has to do with provisioning. I'm going to use a, a nice, simple, good-looking, easy-to-use dashboard. I like to call that the cell help the dashboard. It's like when you're going to drive in a car you never driven before, well it should be intuitive enough for you to actually be able to drive it. And then we're going to be doing things like creating provisioning policies, defining roles, and doing some of those things through another interface which is the console. Also browser-based, but uh, with far many more options for you to actually uh, use. And I like to call that the cockpit. You really need to go to flying school, even though if you're, you're a pilot, if you're flying a new type of airplane, you really need to understand that cockpit and what all the functions that, that, that are in there. And to that cockpit, we're going to be, you know, defining services, provisioning policies, and tie them all that together around their roles. Those We're going to be providing very many scenarios, so this is just the introductory uh, explanation of what is it that we're going to be doing. We look forward for you to uh, watch uh, the, the very many videos uh, that comes uh, after as a, as a continuation of this.